Hello, my name is Ferdinando Almeida, and I am a PhD student at the Hans Stein Monogastric Nutrition Laboratory here at the University of Illinois. Today, I will be presenting the effects of a novel phytase on phosphorus digestibility in corn soybean meal diets fed to wheeling and growing pigs. The outline of this presentation will be as follows Introduction, Objectives, Experiments 1 and 2, Overall Conclusions from both experiments, and finally, some implications of our research. Swine manure is rich in phosphorus because most of the phosphorus in organic sources, such as corn and soybean meal, is bound to the phytate molecule. This figure on the right shows the phytate molecule, which is formed by six carbons, represented in yellow, that can bind up to six molecules of phosphate, represented in brown, green, and white. Because pigs lack the enzyme that hydrolyzes the phytate molecule, most of the phosphorus present in organic sources is unavailable to the pigs. And therefore, inorganic phosphorus in the form of monocalcium phosphate or dicalcium phosphate needs to be added to the diets to meet the pig's requirement of phosphorus. This practice, however, has become expensive, and it is not uncommon to observe an oversupply of inorganic phosphorus in diet fed to pigs, which is one of the causes for the large amount of phosphorus excreted in swine manure. For this reason, regulations that limit the amount of phosphorus that can be applied on the fields have been created and this has led researchers to find solutions to improve phosphorus utilization by pigs and consequently reduce phosphorus excretion. One way of doing it is to add exogenous phytase to the diets. Phytases are the enzymes responsible for the hydrolysis of the phytate molecule. During hydrolysis of the phytate molecule, the phosphates that were bound to the molecule are released into the small intestine and then they are absorbed by pigs. Commercially available phytases can be produced from fungal or bacteria, and they are classified as 3, 5, or 6 phytases depending on the carbon position where they start the hydrolysis of phytate. For example, if a phytase starts the hydrolysis at carbon number 3 in the phytate molecule, this is called a 3 phytase. So, phytases are widely used as they are an efficient approach to improve phosphorus digestibility and therefore reduce phosphorus excretion. There are several phytases commercially available, and new phytases are constantly being developed. The SM Nutritional Products has developed a new phytase called Ronozyme Hyphos. This is a 6 phytase which is derived from bacteria and expressed in Aspergillus oryzae. This enzyme is not yet available commercially, and there are no data on the effects of ronozyme high phos on the apparent total tract digestibility of phosphorus in corn soybean meal diets fed to pigs. Therefore, the objectives of these experiments were first to test the effects of a novel bacterial 6 phytase on the apparent total tract digestibility of phosphorus in corn soybean meal diets fed to wheeling and growing pigs, and second, to determine minimum amounts of phytase needed to optimize the apparent total drag digestibility of phosphorus. Moving now to experiment 1. For the materials and methods, we formulated six corn soybean meal diets. There was a positive control diet with 0.86% calcium and 0.66% phosphorus. This diet contained dicalcium phosphate as an inorganic source of phosphorus and corn and soybean meal as organic sources of phosphorus. The negative control diet contained 0.48% calcium and 0.36% phosphorus. And this diet contained only organic sources of phosphorus, corn and soybean meal. In addition to these two diets, we formulated four diets that were the negative control plus four levels of phytase, and these levels were 500, 1000, 2000, and 4000 phytase units per kilogram. And once again, the enzyme that we used was Ronozyme Hyphos from DSM. 48 wheeling pigs were used in a randomized complete block design with eight pigs per treatment. 
They were placed in metabolism cages that were equipped with a nipple drinker and a feeder. Water was available at all times and feed was provided twice daily. These cages were also equipped with a screen that goes underneath the floor, as shown on this picture on the right, which allowed for the total collection of feces. For the statistical analysis, we used the PROC mixed of SAS and the model included treatment as a fixed effect and block as a random effect. There was no effect of block and therefore block was removed from the final model. We also conducted polynomial contrasts in which we compared the positive control versus negative control diet and we also tested the linear and quadratic effects of adding graded levels of phytase to the negative control diet. In addition to that, we conducted a least squares broken line analysis to determine the minimum amount of phytase needed to maximize the apparent total tract digestibility of phosphorus. Looking at the results now, this first graph shows the apparent total tract digestibility of phosphorus. On the y-axis, we have apparent total tract digestibility of phosphorus in percentage basis. The yellow bar represents the positive control diet. The orange bar represents the negative control diet. The maroon bar represents negative control plus 500 phytase units per kilogram. The bright red represents negative control plus 1,000 phytase units per kilogram. The dark green represents negative control plus 2,000 phytase units per kilogram. And the bright green represents negative control plus 4,000 phytase units per kilogram. As we expected, the apparent total tract digestibility of phosphorus was greater in the positive control diet than in the negative control diet, 60 versus 40 percent. We observed that adding graded levels of phytase to the negative control diet improved the apparent total tract digestibility of phosphorus linear and quadratically from 40 to 70 percent in the negative control diet plus 4,000 phytase units per kilogram. Results from the broken line analysis indicate that the apparent total tract digestibility of phosphorus reached a maximum of 68.4% at a phytase level of 1,016 phytase units per kilogram. Now let's look at experiment 2. For the materials and methods, we formulated six corn soybean meal diets as we did for experiment 1 with the exception that in experiment 2, the positive control diet contained 0.79% calcium and 0.56% phosphorus, and the negative control diet contained 0.58% calcium and 0.33% phosphorus. The levels of phytase added to the negative control diet were the same as in experiment 1, 500, 1000, 2000, and 4000 phytase units per kilogram. For this experiment, we used 24 growing pigs in a two-period changeover design. In period 1, pigs had an initial body weight of 36.2 kg, and in period 2, pigs had an initial body weight of 47.3 kg. For the statistical analysis, we used the PROC mixed of SAS, and the model included treatment and period as fixed effects, while block was the random effect. There were no effects of period and block, and therefore, they were sequentially removed from the final model. Once again, we used polynomial contrasts to compare the positive control versus the negative control diet, and we also tested the linear and quadratic effects of adding graded levels of phytase to the negative control diet. We also conducted the least square broken line analysis to determine the minimum amount of phytase that is necessary to maximize the apparent total tract digestibility of phosphorus. Now moving on to the results. This graph has the same pattern as the graph for experiment 1. The results show that the apparent total tract digestibility of phosphorus was greater for the positive control diet than for the negative control diet, as we expected. We also observed 
that the apparent total track digestibility of phosphorus was improved linear and quadratically as phytase was added to the negative control diet. While the apparent total track digestibility of phosphorus for the negative control diet was 40%, the apparent total track digestibility of phosphorus for the negative control diet containing 4,000 phytase units per kilogram was 72%. Results from the broken line analysis indicate that the apparent total track digestibility of phosphorus reached a maximum of 69.1% at a phytase level of 801 phytase units per kilogram, with no further improvements at any level above 801 and below 4,000 phytase units per kilogram. For the overall conclusions, Ronozyme high phos was effective in improving the apparent total tract digestibility of phosphorus in both wheeling and growing pigs. Inclusion levels between 800 and 1,000 phytase units per kilogram were able to maximize the apparent total tract digestibility of phosphorus. Although our objective was not to compare wheeling versus growing pigs, our results show that the effects of adding graded levels of ronozyme high phos to corn soybean meal diets were very similar, which indicates that the effects of adding this enzyme to corn soybean meal diets fed to pigs with a body weight anywhere between 14 and 47 kg should be the same. This observation is in agreement with the fact that in experiment 2, there was no effect of period on the apparent total tract digestibility of phosphorus, and it is also in agreement with previous data published in 1999 where body weight also had no effect on phosphorus digestibility. For the implications, phytase definitely increases phosphorus digestibility in corn and soybean meal diets. Ronozyme high phos can be effectively supplemented to corn soybean meal diets and we should expect to see an improvement in phosphorus utilization by pigs, as well as a reduction in phosphorus excretion. I would like to acknowledge DSM Nutritional Products for funding this project, and I would like to thank you for your attention. If you need more information, please visit our website that appears on the screen.